Welcome everyone. We get started with our webinar today. For joining us, I'm Josh Van Tonder, the Director of Product Marketing at Criticism. And, uh, today, we would like to take the time uh, to cover DocuSign's secret sauce for mobile success. And what we're going to be talking about is how DocuSign used mobile ADM, uh, mobile application performance management, to give their users a faster, more reliable apps. So <clears throat> today is Shanu Rahar, who is the Senior Product Manager at DocuSign. Um, hi, Shanu. How are you doing? Hi, Josh. Thanks for the intro. So Shantanu is a mobile product manager at DocuSign, and he shepherds a crack team that develops customer employee-facing mobile apps. Uh, before his role at DocuSign, Shantanu was actually at, uh, at Neo and then at, at Williams-Sonoma. We, we really appreciate you taking the time uh, joining us today and, and sharing your best practices and info you've learned. So thank you so much. Perfect. So just a little bit of housekeeping, folks. Um, we have an hour scheduled, but I don't think we'll we'll be taking that entire time. We'll probably go for about 40, 45 minutes. Um, you'll notice that you have a chat chat pod that, pod that you can send in some questions for us, and we'd love it if, as we're going through the presentation, as things come to mind, please send us a question, and uh, we'll take those at the end. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is this session is being recorded, and we will send the presentation material uh, after the presentation is completed. So for everybody signed up right now, you'll get a copy of the, the webinar uh, for your own for your uses. Well, let me give you a little bit of a highlight how we're going to be spending the time today. So uh, it, our agenda today is going to be like such. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time uh, with Shantanu teeing up why mobile is such a big <clears throat> component of DocuSign at the moment and where they're, w what are the trends that are doing their mobile investments. Uh, John, then we'll also take a, a few minutes to cover the mobile apps and how their organization is structured to deliver those apps and the process behind that. From we'll switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, different areas where they they uh, were looking to make some improvements in how they were uh, driving those apps out the door. Uh, and with that, we'll actually talk more specifically about mobile application performance management and how DocuSign was using that uh, within their applications, uh, specifically to run their mobile apps faster, to make it much easier for them to troubleshoot various issues that they were they were running into and how to how to improve those, uh, and <clears throat> finally how to improve just general visibility into the performance and the customer experience of those mobile applications. And close out quickly with just a few minutes really more specifically on, on criticisms or application performance um, solution. So I'll give you one slide just to give you some context on criticism before handing it over to Shantanu. So it is really the leading mobile application performance manage, management solution. Uh, we deliver granular that enables developers, IT operations, and, and product managers to deliver faster, better, smarter mobile apps. And what makes us unique is, is we have a massively scalable big data platform that delivers a, you know, a, a global view of app diagnostics. And we do this across the major mobile platforms, so iOS, Android, Windows Phone, HTML5, hybrid apps. We are on more than 800 million devices we cover over 3 billion daily transactions from uh, 120 countries. Uh, companies turn to us um, in order to improve their mobile app revenues, improve quality of, of the brand associated with their mobile apps, and then to reduce the operational expenses uh, by reducing the time to find and fix problems. So at the end of the day, um, we're really out there to help development times focus on building their apps. And spending more time shipping features and less time getting uh, bogged in, in bugs. So we're, we're funded by some of the top tier VC firms, including Google Shares and Kleiner Perkins, um, and, and certainly have been recognized by folks like Gartner for, for the technology that are, is helping provide value to those 
with mobile apps. With that, I'd like to show one quick poll question. Uh, we wanted to get a sense of the various type of applications that the um, company is delivering, and it'll help provide a little bit of context. So I'll just take a couple moments. If you could answer that, that poll question, what kind of mobile apps is your company deploying this year? Are they more customer-facing, consumer-facing apps, or um, delivering employee-facing apps? And I'm realizing now we probably should have a checkbox that said both. Um, uh, you can't pick both. Perfect. So this is really going to help us get a bit of context on the types of apps that you have uh, on your system and what you'll be deploying this year. A couple more people answer those. And obviously, you know, the type of topic that we're talking about cuts across both of these solutions, but it's helpful for both Janu and myself as we kind of walk through the content to understand how, um, how you're approaching apps and what kind of apps you're delivering. Well, it looks like from the results here, we have a majority of folks, two-thirds almost, that are delivering consumer or customer-facing applications. And then <clears throat> the balance of that is focused on applications that are more enterprise-focused, so apps that are <clears throat> delivered for your employees in order to boost their productivity. With that, I'd like to... Um, hand it over to Shant New uh, and to tee up a little bit about DocuSign and then the mobile apps that you're deploying. So Shant New, why don't you take it away for us? Thanks. That was, and that was a great segue that you uh, passed on to because here at DocuSign, we do have mobile apps as well. You know, everybody needs to sign something, not only people in enterprises, but also consumers, permission slips, uh, and any other types of personal forms as well. So here at DocuSign, our goal is to keep business digital. Enterprises have invested millions of dollars in business systems for every functional area, yet, the moment of truth, we are using thousand-year-old technologies, paper, pen, and to either sign deals, get approvals, and pretty much transact business. That, that, has, a, that has a big impact on your, on your customers. It has transactions, high fraud, high operational costs, poor experience, which all leads to frustrated customers. Here at DocuSign, we can address, address that last frontier. By overall metric, DocuSign is number one. We're the leader in number of users, leaders in market shares, and we're the leader amongst analysts. We only vendor to score five out of five on mobile platforms to support. Here's just a few of our customers joining us on our value journey. We have uh, customers in every vertical, financial services, insurance, technology, communication, healthcare, real estate, government, and pretty much else you can think of. Right now, at Packard, they use DocuSign across 148 countries to complete contracts. Comcast, they use DocuSign for 1,000 B2B field sales reps on iPads to complete business. Butte is the first statewide district attorney's office to use electronic signatures for search warrants. But we also have the customers who use DocuSign. We Customers, our apps have been downloaded millions of times uh, by consumers uh, like ourselves who use uh, our apps for personal use as well. Both consumer and business. And I, I happen to notice that uh, on the registration list, they had a number of people for financial services. And I understand that's a, that's an area that you have a pretty strong um, basis as well. What, what, do you want a sense of the use case yeah. there as well? Sure. We have. Uh, Ameritrade, we have Fidelity who use uh, DocuSign for in-person signings within within their office to uh, to sign up new accounts. Or they have an iPad uh, where they just pass it over to their customers uh, to make uh, to make signatures to add signatures to create a new account. And I, I guess I should mention I I, I uh, we use DocuSign at criticism as well, so a happy customer ourselves. And uh, I actually sign my contract using you guys, so definitely. Uh, mission critical from my perspective. I'd love to hear that. My favorite slides here. More importantly, our customers are improving their net promoter scores by implementing DocuSign in their customer-facing interactions. One of the largest staffing firms in the world is an, uh, uses DocuSign to complete employment contracts. 
By doing so, they've increased their net promoter score by 58 points. Who may not know, um, let's just define net promoter. Uh, so could you just give um, audience a sense of how that's, that's calculated and what that means? Yeah, it's almost as would you recommend your product to someone else? And based on a scale, I think of minus 10 to positive 10. And uh, obviously a plus is good and minus is bad. So using the, so, you know, the cardinal rule of recommendation as the measure here. So we recommend exactly. a friend, essentially. Yep, exactly. Perfect. Sure you all know mobile's taken over the workplace. Uh, right now, these numbers are probably low. Uh, we have a billion consumers having smartphones uh, across the world. Of those, 350 million will be using smartphones at work. 200 million of those will be bringing their own devices in. So percent of employees use their devices for 25% of their work. So what that means is our apps need to always be on, always be available. And, you know, some stats that I saw just this last week, I think Gartner put out something that said, you know, finally smartphones have now overtaken the old feature phone shipments. Um, and, you know, just last year, I think it was a billion, billion shipments of smartphones. So just tremendous, tremendous pace. And I think everybody on the line here, you're on the phone uh, joining our webinar. Obviously, this is something you, you understand, but it's, it's just tremendous. It is, I don't think, you know, folks have seen an opportunity like this uh, of technology uh, in, in quite some time. It's absolutely amazing. Definitely. So what are the reasons people use uh, mobile? Fall away, time saving and productivity. Our app has to be not only incredibly intuitive and easy to use, it always needs to be available for, for you to, for, to be able to be able to product, productive while on the go. And the way, we think DocuSign Mobile is pretty darn cool as well. Sending an action paper, that's so yesterday, with your, figness, with your finger, any or any time, that's pretty cool. Have a brief history of DocuSign Mobile. 2009, we released our first mobile web app. 2011, we released our first iOS app that had basic sign and return. 2012, uh, we released our first Android app in the Google Play Store. Uh, we put a big investment in our iOS 2.0 app. It could you can send for signature, host in-person signing, and have cloud storage. At the end of 2012, we also launched a Windows 8 app. 2013, you can see we had a big investment in mobile. We had multiple iOS releases, multiple web releases. Uh, we put a big investment in our Android uh, app that allowed you to sign, send for signature, host in-person signings. And we even launched a Windows phone towards the end of last year. Sign is a complete mobile solution. We have apps that give you a native experience tailored specifically for that device's OS. We have mobile web access uh, available on any internet enabled mobile device. Uh, we can also have custom integrations with our robot API so you can integrate DocuSign mobile solutions quickly into your office systems. Just on a note from uh, our side, we, we've been doing some analysis of the, the, the aggregate data that criticism. So and, and, you know, you guys, DocuSign obviously provide an API that other vendors can use in their mobile apps. Um, you know, what we're seeing, and just generally, mobile apps, we're finding that a mobile app tends to have something between, uh, you know, sort of five, six, seven different services under the covers that it's composed of, of the external APIs or cloud services that help deliver the ultimate experience. Um, and, and it's, you know, obviously, with document entering mix, this is sort of one one new capability that you can add to your your, your mobile apps in order to add signing capability. A couple of screenshots of our uh, iOS, Android, and Windows phone app. On here, this is our iOS app. You can see the large call to actions to add documents. You can see iconography for signing right now and adding a signer. Very easy to use. No, don't need to help. You don't need to read a manual to, to use this app. In the middle, you see our signing experience for Android. You can simply tap on the signature field to place it, tap on a text field to place this, tap on the date to place it. Again, very easy to use. And, the, and on the right here, this is our new Windows Phone app. And this is like the home page of our Windows Phone app. You can get the large buttons to start a document, uh, icons to create signatures and add your uh, photo. 
And you can see some document interactions there with the numbers. We have four things awaiting your signature, 23 completed, four out for signature. So that home, from the home screen, you can pretty much do everything uh, with our Windows Phone app. Do you have um, tablet versions of these as well? We do have an iOS tablet app. Uh, we have an I, uh, Android tablet app. Uh, we actually have Android for uh, four inch, seven inch, and ten inch. So optimized for each of uh, each uh, each of those devices. And we have a Windows Phone app and a Windows tablet app as well. Wow. Um, well, the funny thing is, is yeah. about how you you deliver those. So I think people are going to be interested in how you structure your team to to deliver such a diverse set of, of apps. And then, and you can also we also see that the usage between the between a tablet and a phone is quite different. Uh, where on a phone, somebody's usually on there for 30 and maybe 90 seconds, or on the tablet, their average use is maybe two to four minutes. So it's really, it's really great, interesting metric. Here, here's the team, uh, the mobile team at DocuSign. Uh, two product managers, including myself, six time developers, two full-time QA engineers. Compared to our other product management and engineering, engineering teams, uh, mobile team is a bit more nimble. Our release cycles, we, we, we try to release now with criticism. Uh, since we've implemented criticism, uh, every two to four weeks. Our sprints are every two weeks. Uh, and we try to release at the end of each sprint or at the end of each two sprints. And Anu, could you um, maybe give a bit of context here uh, in terms of the, the tooling that you guys are using? Um, so do you use a continuous integration um, sure. What, what pieces play a role in that for you? To sure. Uh, like probably many of you guys, we use Jira for our issue tracking and um, release planning. We use uh, uh, we GitHub for our uh, repository for coding repository, uh, and then we use Bombay for our build server. And what about um, you? Said there's both, uh, you know, web team and web ops as well as mobile. Um, What's the action between between teams? Are are, do, are they yeah. somewhat separate? Is there uh, where are the integration points between these teams? Yeah, that's that's true. So for, we have we have a lot of cross platform projects where we need our platform team and we need our API team. They are separate teams that work very closely with mobile. Uh, in terms of ops, ops pretty much um, main the DocuSign service. The mobile team is monitoring the mobile service itself. And we actually use criticism to do that monitoring. Perfect. Okay, well, I think, you know, with that, should we dive into some of the <clears throat> more use cases and, and tee up um, what what yeah. are the things you're looking at that um, that some of these use cases and using the technology um, mobile sure. AP? Perfect. Sure. So a few challenges our teams face when implementing and releasing these uh, releasing mobile apps. Um, this the first one we came into uh, with Android with the fragmentation of the manufacturers' devices and all the different OSs uh, users on. Um, I, think, I think there's over three thousand or four thousand permutations of some manufacturers, not much with uh, with uh, uh, iOS, but so we really needed visibility into the issues affecting our users. Part was to reproducing and prioritizing our known issues. We wanted to prioritize our most important crashes. One to do a lengthy release cycles. Before our release cycles, we'll be releasing about every three to four months, which is not really optimized for a mobile for a mobile team. Went to these. Do narcissism. We're getting more visibility into issues affecting our users. Issue detection was done by our uh, engineers. Number two is probably me, product manager. Uh, our customer also gave us uh, issues that are affecting them through communication channels. And worst of all, get emails from the executive team saying something went wrong with one of our apps. With the implementation of criticism, a lot of our issue detection is now automated. Criticism gives us reports, it gives us reports of crashes, and now and email and the product, the product and emails. That, that channel is now decreased in terms of getting our bug detection. I was wondering, you know, could you just maybe take us, uh, put us in your shoes in the before scenario? Does this, I mean, were you essentially going to the app store 
for to get a sense of things or or where one of them yeah how does that really what what does that mean sure right so we yeah other than bugs that QA themselves fix, we'd have to go through um, customer channels. That would be email. We had a feedback email within the app, app store reviews um, in the app that I'd have, I'd have to mine. It'd be a very manual process. Uh, you know, it'd be four or five emails back and forth with somebody before I can actually get down to their issue. You know, I'd have to get version they're on, what app they were using, what did they do, um, and you know, throughout the day that you know that that that, that cuts into your time. Absolutely. You kind of have to. You usually have to carve out some of your own. What would say QA time? You know, PM QA time to take care of this yourself. Definitely. Um, and, and at this point, so essentially, um, you're you're getting reviews. If you you're, you're getting reports onto the issue that you're you're seeing at the moment. Definitely. Yep. Dashboard and reports. So here's just an example of how, how we get more visibility here. Um, here you can see the number of uploads, the number of crashes. Uh, what you don't know, see is also other stats that we really look into. We see the app version you're using. We see the, the OS version you're using. We see the platform you're using. We actually even see the device you're using. There, this is really for trending. I can tell what people are, how people are using our app and what's actually what, what, what's even causing some of our crashes or what version is causing crashes, what version isn't causing crashes. Goblin. Information. This is part of my daily routine now as a product manager. So when you you know get to the office in the morning and you get to the point where you want to look at this this kind of thing, what what questions are you trying to answer with this information? I, I like to see first of all I like I like to see the basic stuff, saying hey, how many uploads did we have, what ver version are people on right now. Uh, I also like to see hey are, is the crash rate going up or is it going down. Um, I uh, and from there, uh, I can see you know a good health check of our app from here. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> so this big one right here, uh, knowing what to fix and how to quickly troubleshoot it. For it took to fix crashes that we did not know the frequency of occurrence. It, we we I don't know one crash that we had that took us about four weeks to fix, and now we realize it only affected less than one percent of our users. Criticism, we only work on our high priority crashes. Criticism is now involved in our sprint release process. Every sprint, we store a task for a developer is to fix the high priority criticism crashes. I don't even need to tell them what they are. They just start from number one and go down to number five and fix as many as they can. The other part of this was trying to repro a crash took up to two weeks. Manual process, a lock and forth uh, communication with the customer, QA, uh, the engineers. Now, there's some breadcrumbs. We can resolve most crashes in just a couple of days. So, this is uh, another example uh, of the prioritization via affected users. Right, you can see the number of times a crash occurs and the number of users it, is, it has affected. We know at the beginning of each sprint or the beginning of each start of each sprint, I want to knock off top 10 of these, and then the engineers will go in and knock them off. And the next slide will show you how we kind of how we repro these. John, I think you, you mentioned in the example earlier where you said, you know, you had decided to tackle a particular bug issue that, that soap about four weeks of time, but then um, you later found out that it, it really only affected sort of one percent of your users um, so what I'm translating here is in your new, new world what you basically do is you essentially looked at the user affected number there to determine well you know what what percentage of my user base is being impacted and then make a determination with your team on on whether that's the right you know if it, whether it's worth that investment or resources is that essentially is that a good summarization that is correct yeah exactly right okay Perfect. So I think the, you also mentioned, you know, the first part was well, understanding how to prioritize fix, and then the second part you mentioned was, well, okay, well, how do we figure out once we prioritize it, how do we actually troubleshoot what that issue was? And I think that's where you came. You were mentioning the breadcrumbs aspect. Yeah. Yeah. So breadcrumbs. Uh, before breadcrumbs, 
try to repro a crash uh, was quite manual. Uh, um, with we now get step-by-step -step instructions of which snippet of code is being accessed that caused that crash. This is a favorite thing engineers. Uh, no more manual process with this. Now I can fix a crash in about two days, get it, in, get it into our develop branch in two days. So essentially, this is something that um, your engineers would use to trace the steps that an end user took before resulting in some sort of crash. Is, is that how it's being used? That's exactly being used. Okay. Um, so qu question for you. Uh, th there's something yep. that came through the audience, and may maybe you can answer it. Um, do you guys run into items that, that are perhaps more related to the resources on the device, uh, you know, memory or things, things like that? Is that something that that your team has to has to deal with and and, and uh, doesn't plays a role in potentially. Definitely. So we we have we have memory leaks. Uh, uh, we have other we have other just events, air events, not only crashes that criticism or captures for us as well. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Um, <clears throat> and, so and actually, using, yeah. Actually, quickly, just in. What this also allows us to do uh, is it allows our engineering resources to spend more time on features and. Um, innovation and uh, and less time on bug fixes and crashes. Really important for an engineering team. Yeah, it, you know, focus the limited resources on on things that are you know bringing new features to market, if you will. Yep, and innovating on our product. Right, it's probably a good segue to this one. <laughs> Perfect, great segue. Yeah, who made these? No. Okay, so what does this all lead to? To fast release cycles. Before we're doing four to six releases a year, maybe two four releases, uh, six releases a year, every two to three months. Now we release every two to four weeks. Um, we had before we had large dot releases that there are features and bug fixes. Now every two to four weeks, we definitely will always have a bug fix release coming out, which includes crashes. And this, this also, yeah, real quick here, uh, with Android we all, always had this which was the auto-updating of apps. Now with iOS 7, uh, people don't have to manually update their apps, or most people don't have to manually update, update their apps. So it's not, a, it's not a really bad thing to pushing out releases that builds a quality product. Uh, out of curiosity, how is the, that auto-update um, capability in iOS 7? It's great. We, we, we see, whenever we push a release, we see about oh, 75 to 80% uh, adoption within three days. No, three, to three days. Wow, that, that's yeah. really quick. Um, and, you know, how, do, how do you how do you see that? How are you measuring that? We can see that in criticism by uploads by version. Oh, you're using yeah. uploads. Okay, perfect. Yep. Um, and you're sort of watching the versions of the apps that are being being released, essentially. Exactly. So yeah, we we can use the trend. We use trends, right? We can we can use crash trends to see how our uptime, our crash rates vary with new with every new version. Monitor the app. Way, what this is done always anyway, anyways. But right after we release, we really monitor uh, the app. We look for a downward trend in the crash rate, um, and, and then if um, if there is an upward trend, we attack quite quickly. I'm just going to summarize here. So essentially, what you're doing when when you release, let's say you you know you just hypothetically, you, let's say you had a release last week. Uh, what we would then be doing is once the release is published out, out to the App Store, uh, you would go into this dashboard <clears throat> and look at, you, you know, filter by the last release last week versus the release you had in the App Store, say, you know, a month before that or whatever the prior release was. And then looking at the, the trending information, you can see if, if the particular application is improving or or, or regressing in terms of stability. Is that that's, exactly. is that sort of what's that's, going on here? That's exactly what's going on. Yep. That's good and would, would you similarly be watching kind of the use, the user base as well and seeing how that that bumps up or down? Yeah, our user base right now with the with the update always bumps up. So uh, we're as worried about that as we were before. Ah. Uh -huh. uh, and, and are you guys using the uh, you know, we're showing the crashes here, but there's also the capability for keeping track of handled exceptions, which are, you know, non-fatal errors. Is that something that your team also makes use of in a, in a similar way? Oh, we definitely way? do. Yeah, 
We definitely do. That's part of my uh, the engine manager's uh, 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 routine for releases as well. Oh, and then, does that also fall into your your sprint plan? It does. Yeah. Okay. So, um, just a quick summary here. Um, the benefits we've got once we put a criticism, we've got faster releases. You know, almost two x improvement. Uh, this is really important for engineering. Faster troubleshooting uh, went down to two days for issue resolution. That's almost like a seven times improvement. This is important to me. Improved prioritization. We now have data to prioritize issues versus features. We can spend more time on features and not bugs. That also makes me happy as well. We get a better customer experience. We're shipping apps of higher quality much faster. In terms of the faster releases, I mean, I think we we have definitely been talking about you know why this is great from an engineering standpoint. But I mean, you're you're obviously lead things also from a, a business standpoint, being the product manager. Um, right. Does this just mean faster? You know, is it does this translate into more agility from a, a time to market perspective or ability to you know find uh, market fit with new 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 features faster? How, how, what does it translate to in a business sense for you? It does. It, it translates to both. Uh, uh, we can we can we can help. This not only allows us to fa uh, put uh, uh, bug fixes out faster, it allows us to put features out faster because now we're spending more time on features, right? So it's it's it works it works in both ways there. Cool, Thanks. clarifying. Yeah. So here's just a couple of reasons why we chose criticism. First of all, for product managers here, the easy to use and the deep diagnostic. The report is easy to use. I very rarely go to the help. They have great dashboarding. They have great alerting. Our engineers love the second part. Easy to implement. We have SDK up and running one day. Uh, third, thirdly, platform support. We have apps for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Criticism supports all of those platforms. And I think that's why pretty much they're the leader in the space. So we're working out here in the mobile team. Uh, our app, we're really proud of our app. Apps. Our apps have been um, featured on the main page for all three app stores uh, for iOS, um, the iOS in the, in the Apple App Store, in the Google Play Store, and the Windows Store. Uh, we won a bunch of awards, and we get great reviews like this one that really make my day. Um, so if you look, take a look at our uh, reviews in the App Store, you'll see five-star reviews. I think we're at about 95 or 96 percent of five-star reviews. Cool. It's something to print out and put on your cube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> Perfect. Sean, you really, really awesome uh, sort of summary, you know, in terms of the best practices. Um, we're going to take a, a, a quick question here. And for those <clears throat> watching, if you could just take a minute, and um, we're interested to find out, you know, given, given a mobile, what are you doing? In terms of locating or getting visibility into your apps that are deployed, um, you know that you've released to your app to app stores, either internal enterprise app stores or the public stores. Um, this is something you, you can choose more than one answer here if, you, if you'd like. Um, just curious, to kind of get a sense of well, where are people getting the visibility today, um, and in terms of mobile performance. So if you just take a, a quick second and uh, for these. I'm taking a, a, a look at the results here. <clears throat> so it's interesting to us uh, just to get a sense of what, what current technology is that you're making use of for these sorts of questions. Like, how do I know what the uptime of my app is? How do I know what the the hand, you know error rate is in, in handle exceptions? And areas that we, we haven't spent a lot of time digging into, which I'll talk about in a moment, about um, you know what's the performance of the services, uh, web services that my mobile app depends on. Okay. So, uh, we'll make a quick look at the results here. <clears throat> All right. It's tabbing. So it looks like there are a few folks that, uh, you know, are using crash monitoring. I, I also know that there are a few, uh, having a look at the illustration, there few customers of criticism on the on the line, so I'm glad to I'm hoping that that's that's us our our product you're using as well. <laughs> um, and then there, after that, the next major one is more along the lines of actually support emails and the ratings and reviews on 
fine <clears throat> with the app stores. So getting the, will, uh, uh, the lagging indicator of um, a customers run into an issue find online or through the support. Okay. So with that, um, I'd like to just transition. We're only going to do a few more slides uh, to give you a little back of criticism solution. Um, what you've been hearing about with DocuSign, uh, News covered a, a number of aspects of how our mobile application performance management solution is used. In particular, we've been talking about the, the error monitoring and crash monitoring aspects. Uh, we also have capabilities <clears throat> that are part of the solution for monitoring the cloud service and network performance of your mobile application. So, so uh, of the you know five or six different services your app is using, are they having errors and, and uh, latencies? As well as performance that relates more to the carrier or network care connectivity and Wi-Fi connectivity. This is built on you know a platform that allows us to to, to deploy across uh, multiple mobile OSs, uh, as well as the security and dashboarding and, and, and availability uh, for, for the components here. Um, a lot of customers also use our API to extract information and integrate into their own their dashboarding capabilities. So just very briefly, I'd like to give you a sense of what, you know, what kinds of performance issues. You've heard a number of them from Shopnu. Um, the reality is the mobile world is uh, quite different than the web world. Um, there are a number of components in the ecosystem that complicate doing a high-performing apps. Uh, some of these are, you know, keeping track of really the transaction errors associated with <clears throat> e-events like a, a shopping cart or um, the ability to do a referral, or the ability to onboard a customer, or to do an on signature, right? So uh, similarly, there are the ability to maintain and monitor the errors associated with the web services, cloud services that your app connects to, and the latency associated with those. Are those responsive or not? Uh, app crashes and exceptions. And then there are also issues that are related to the location of the end user using your, your system. I mean, these very client, uh, client side centric and so the location that imp that affects this uh, play plays a role. So if you have a employee-facing app that's used by store associates with within a store, the geography of that m might impact things. Or if you are entering a new market with your app, the the new wide carriers, etc., can play a role in how your app performs as you roll out across new geographies. Customers are um, like Design are, are turning to us for Visibility, the ability to to uh, monitor, to to trouble and prioritize, as well as trend their applications. So customers like PayPal and Yahoo, Zynga, uh, Home Depot, and Walmart use our solution to get the additional visibility uh, and ability to prioritize and shoot their mobile applications. So, with um, you know, obviously the the star of the show here was really Shantanu to show. Uh, some aspects of how how they're using technology, <clears throat> mobile application performance management, to really shine a light on app quality uh, and to, to to drive faster release cycles and, and improve the customer ex experience. And, and and the reason why this is becoming more critical is mobile platforms have a whole new set of complexity in terms of the device, the apps, the OS, the network, the carriers. There's just a multitude of combinations of these that become incredibly difficult to gain visibility into because, you know, frankly, uh, you are you, you typically are running on someone else's device, which is unlike the web world. So DocuSign's really been able to deliver uh, more stable, responsive apps and improve improve their customer experience. And we really, you know, Sean, we appreciate you taking the time today to, to share your experience uh, in the space. We've been able to uh, develop mobile apps really across a, a wide range of platforms and and formats as well. So there's a couple uh, questions that are, are coming in. So Shanu, if if I may, I'm going to take a second here and um, ask a couple questions. Sure. Um, so this is just a more pragmatic one. 
one. Um, it sounds like a very high-performing mobile team here. You've, you've got apps on all the major uh, platforms and <clears throat> on, on multiple formats, yet you have a fairly you know, nimble team. How do you guys think about building your, your mobile team? Are you, you know, training them, training them, hiring them, buy, buying them? You know, how, how do you guys go about building a crack team? Right, yeah. Right now, um, our and our iOS was done in-house, uh, so that was done by you know internal DocuSign employees. Uh, we outsourced our Windows app, but uh, we plan to bring that um, inside as well. So I think to build uh, to, to to build a proper ecosystem, I, I really think you should either I think you should you should have up all your developers in in way in-house, uh, either through hiring or through buying. Perfect. Uh, the, the other question here is that you're on so many different platforms. Could you talk, you know, just a little bit about your experience in terms of optimizing the app experience on, say, you know, iOS versus Android? I mean, how is the Android device and OS fragmentation affecting things in how yeah. you go about optimizing your your apps on different platforms? So that's a great question. Um, actually, the world to really we don't we try not to optimize by platform uh, right now, what we really do is try to optimize by, by size. So we, we've seen that there's certain things that people on a phone need to do and there's, there, and there's a certain look and feel the app needs to have. Uh, there needs to be large call to actions on these apps. It needs to be done really quickly. You need to be able to approve and sign something literally in a, in a few seconds. That's where something like push notifications come, very, uh, come in really handy. On the we found uh, you know, uh, the the average time is a lot higher. Um, people have a little bit more composition on the tablet. So, uh, even though we still have our quick hits of signing and approving, uh, there's a, a lot more composition that goes on in a tablet. So, we try to optimize for each uh, device size that way. Now, in terms of our our our, our um, platforms, iOS is is you know we 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 push new features on that and Android and and Windows are fast followers. Right. Uh, maybe an extension of the same question is where um, we talked about prioritizing, you know, sort of uh, and, and crashes. But you know, maybe from a standpoint of how do you prioritize work when it comes to different different devices? I mean, like, you know, how do do you have choices about the your device demographics say to optimize something? For the Galaxy Four, when it's on the on something, or 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 not really. Well, that usually comes uh, from our customer requests from our big enterprise customers. If a big enterprise customer is using uh, rolled out, you know, ten thousand tablets, and they need a certain functionality, uh, we probably push it to that point right there. Um, in terms of a consumer use case, um, I think we're I think we're really close to have for for uh, being. Uh, on all platforms and all devices in, ter in terms of the consumer. We push out all our consumer requests at the same time. So I think one other question here, um, and, I, and I think I can probably take this one. Um, sure. Which was about, you know, criticism of the log network issues and, and, and errors. And, and the example uh, was errors returned from a web call. So the answer to that is yes. We we, we provide capabilities for monitoring the services that your <clears throat> that your mobile app can connect to. So that's both internal services um, that our own company provides for consumed by our app, as well as third-party services. And to give you uh, a sense, we ca capture the latencies; those we capture the you know the the error that would be returned. And then we we all capture the the data transferred um, as, as, along with you know so so you get throughput of that as well. So we provide fairly granular data that can be sliced and diced again by similar characteristics: um, the OS, the you know the type of you know the service, the actual end point that's being connected to um, <clears throat> yeah, that that would be sent along with this. Well. Um, I think we're getting close to to uh, 
Yeah, a minute. So let me see if there's one more question here. And it is okay. We're good here. So if there are any questions that come through a little bit afterwards, we'd be happy to reach out to folks um, with particular particular questions. Uh, again, you know, Shantanu really appreciate you sharing your best practices, lessons learned uh, in in the mobile space. I think everybody on the line, you know, it's always interesting to hear from from people that are really on the you know the leading edge you will of mobile. So thank you very much for taking the time to share your, your knowledge with everyone. No, my pleasure. Well, um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. As, as we said at the start of the webinar, we are recording this and you'll be sent a recording of the webinar uh, once we uh, close out. So thank you so much for your time. If anyone has any questions uh, about criticism or uh, certainly, you know, if you, if you even if you sign, please reach out to us. We'll put you in touch with, with Shotnu. Um, if you have questions about criticism and our mobile application performance management solution, please do uh, send a question at sales at criticism. It is a, you can definitely try it out. We have a model that allows you to sign up for the free version of our application to, to try it out and integrate it with your app. So if you uh, are on the technical side, please just go ahead and go to our website, sign up, and give it a world. It's very straightforward. You'll be up and running within 30 minutes and collecting performance, performance information on your app. So with that, thank you everyone so much for spending time with us. Shantanu, thanks again. Uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, guys.